Hello everyone and welcome to Summer Game Fest, also known as E3, basically. Pretty much, pretty much E3. The time has come, we are here, we are ready, I'm excited. I'm pretty sure everyone's excited. Who knows what's going to be shown today? Obviously there's like a whole bunch of conferences, so like Microsoft stuff and Bethesda stuff is all going to be there. Square Enix stuff is presumably all going to be in the Square Enix conference, so we don't really know what's going to be going on here. Possibly Elden Ring? <laughs> Maybe? You never know. You never know. It's been two years and a day since Elden Ring was announced. Uh, so maybe. Maybe now is the time for it to be shown. Oh no, let's not have... Let's not have hanging. Let's not have any buffering. I told you we'd start right on time. Hello everyone around the world and welcome to Summer Game Fest Kickoff Live presented by Prime Gaming. I'm Jeff Keeley, and buckle wow, up. His name is because Prime we've got Gaming. a That's big crazy. show for you filled with new game announcements, world premieres, updates on the games you play every day, some surprises, and special guests, including I love Jeff me Goldblum, some surprises. Giancarlo Esposito, and performances by Weezer, Japanese Breakfast, and the Sonic the Hedgehog Symphony Orchestra. Huge yes, that's pop. Really a thing. Sonic now, the Hedgehog like a great Symphony video game, Orchestra there may be some is a twists thing. along the way today, and just wait until you see what we have planned for the end game. That is all I'm allowed to tell you right now. This Please is just the start of a Please. big summer game fest <laughs> weekend of news and updates for fans, including live streamed events from publishers like Xbox and Bethesda, Square Enix, Ubisoft, and more. You can head right now to summergamefest.com. I do think there's a good chance the Elden Ring will show up this weekend. Believe me, there is a lot of uh, great stuff. It might be your tonight. Way. It might be at the Microsoft today, Bethesda one because I think it was announced at Microsoft. So, ninety-minute class industry showcase. Meant to put platforms and rival minutes, did he say? Aside. Okay, I didn't know that. We will that's, have that's updates good. and news for you, no matter if you play on Nintendo Switch, PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. The biggest games in the world will be here, and some of the smallest ones too, made by emerging voices and developers from around the world who represent what's next. Thank you so much for tuning in and kicking off Video Game Summer. Woo! Well, let's begin with a brand new game announcement. You're about to see the world premiere of the next great adventure from Gearbox and 2K. Okay, this has been leaked, I believe. This is the Borderlands spin-off uh, focusing on Tiny Tina called Wonderlands, I believe. Pretty sure Wonderlands is uh, the name we got thrown around. I'm curious how similar to Borderlands like main stuff it Fate. will be. It soars on the wind. Rises from the grave. It stalks the ocean floor. It takes a dump on your dreams. You cannot hide from fate. But you can make your own. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Samberg, really? Okay. Will Arnett. Alright, alright. Ashley Birch, very good. Tiny Tina. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Butt Stallion, what? Early 2022. Cool. How much of a Borderlands game is that, do we think? Do we think that is pretty much exactly Tiny like a normal Tina's Borderlands Wonderlands game? Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is official, and joining us now is Tiny Tina herself, Ashley Birch. Hey, oh, Ashley. I didn't know she was Tiny up, Tina. That's cool. How you doing? Great to have you here. <laughs> she does so many uh, so voices. I think it's crazy, The big man. question everyone's going to have is, She's so good. what is Wonderlands? What can you tell us about it? It's a great question. Yes. It's, a, it's a high fantasy take on a looter shooter, as you saw, and um, if you're a fan of Borderlands, you'll probably recognize hmm. the picture some hung fantasy there, but the elements sound did inspired not. Inspired by Weird. Assault on Dragon Keep, which was the Borderlands 2 DLC that was beloved by the devs, and so this kind of inspired Wonderlands. Uh, now, I think the, the elephant in the room is, is this a Borderlands game? Is it not? Yeah, How that's pretty much relate? what I'm asking. So it actually isn't. It's its own standalone game. Um, and people that love Borderlands are going to find lots of elements to love about Wonderlands, but it's its own thing. Tiny Tina's got her own thing going on now. Um, so it's got 
its own mechanics. There's spell casting. You can customize your character this time, which is super exciting. And um, yeah, so if you love Borderlands, you're gonna find stuff to love in this. And if you've never played a Borderlands game, this is a great place to start. Okay, well, Interesting. Tina gets okay. her own game, which is fantastic. Yes. What is her, her role? Why does she get her own game? So she is your bunker master. Yeah. Um, she is kind of guiding the narrative and changing it on a dime if she wants. Um, and she's just taking your cast of characters, uh, which is an amazing cast, yeah. um, through this wacky world. Uh, and she's taking you on an adventure to defeat the Dragon Lord. And who is I that? I wonder how I big it will be. Play. And I wonder who plays the Dragon Lord, because you've got quite the voice cast, including <laughs> you in this, which oh. is awesome. So yeah. feels Thank like you. such a, a big experience. Um, so this was a bit of a tease, announcing it's out there. Um, when will we find out more about this game? Um, hopefully this summer, yes. um, and you can find out a lot more at playwonderlands.com if you'd like. Okay. Um, hopefully but yeah, this just summer. stay tuned for updates. <laughs> All right, I mean, coming early 2022. So if, yeah, you're, if you're shooting to release year. early Ashley, 2022, so you probably should person. be able to tell more really appreciate it. And <laughs> this uh, summer. We'll see more later this right. summer on that game. All right, well, uh, now I'm curious, it's time I'm curious. for another brand new game announcement. This one you probably are not expecting. A classic 90s franchise is coming back to life as a grid-based tactical strategy title for Steam on PC. This is an insanely fun trailer. I hope Okay, huge pog. Can't wait to not play this because I don't have a PC. You love to see it. Marco. Polo! Metal Slug Tactics. It just said at the bottom, it said the name at the bottom. Metal Slug Tactics. Why would you reveal the name in a tiny bit of text at the bottom before you properly show it on the- Uh, 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 it heard me complain and was like, fuck you, we're pausing. There it is again. It's brought the text back. Spoilers for the title of your game, my dude. Save that for the end. No, that's Futaba. <laughs> this music do be slapping, though. You know what? That was actually a really good trailer. <laughs> it's not my kind of thing, so I don't really mind that uh, I can't play it. <laughs> but okay, that was actually a banging trailer. Got to, got to give it that. For you from a surprise for sure. guest, but it's well past 3 a.m. their time, so don't worry. We chatted earlier, and I'm very excited to share this with you right now. Hello, mystery guest. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Mr. Kojima, it is so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Are you going to uh, tell us what your next from game Tokyo. is? Tokyo. Uh, first of all, I just want to ask: Is this How happening? are you doing? How are you feeling? How are things right now uh, over there in Japan? Tokyo, well, there is a state of emergency in Tokyo right now, and there are still a few, shit, a few situations with COVID. We are slowly starting the vaccine process. So you can't when can I get mine? <laughs> well, we certainly hope that you're going to get your vaccine soon. Um, let me ask you, as a creator, how has this past year impacted you? In the past, about creating things, I was always thinking about what could happen in society in 5, 10, or 20 years. It was like predicting the future and adding the entertainment essence. And that's how I always created but this time it came much too soon. <laughs> yeah, he created Death Stranding. The reality came much too soon, especially on Death Stranding. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like this barren world. And then <laughs> so I've changed how I think and create now. I've really been thinking about this. Because it's entertainment, it has to be fun. 
Uh, I fucking loved Death Stranding, man. I also want to give the player something to learn as well. But since the era is catching up so quickly, it's really not just fiction anymore. So I've been rethinking my creative process. I guess all creators are thinking the same way. It's almost similar to what happened after 9-11. Considering which direction we should go as entertainment. I think that this is a big assignment for us. Well, I know we are all very curious about what the next era of Hideo yeah, Kojima entertainment is going to be. Are we going to get to hear about um, it at all? Or I, I don't know how much you can say, but can you give us any sense of of kind of it's literally where just your mind's at right now, what you're thinking it, about some of the else, themes or the ideas? I can't really say specifically. It won't be like the past. It won't be one step at a time. Oh, I love Death Stranding so much. I'll absolutely be playing whatever he does next. It's a drastic change. Just like after 9-11, we have to adapt and think about new ways of creating as entertainment can't fall behind. I feel like he's repeating the same point like, in three different ways right now. I have to think about what's going to happen in the future. If it was something like an alien coming into my game, it wouldn't matter much about the current state of the world. We could just make up any concept or ideas. But I always want to put some societal elements as a base into the game. To introduce the players to what's happening and maybe they'll think about it. Of course, all the while still being entertaining. With this speed of change, I need to really consider which prediction I make and which ways I introduce ideas to the player. All right, fair enough. I tried. Uh, well, Mr. Kojima, honestly, I, I really do appreciate you making the time to stop by and just say hello to everyone. Uh, we miss you, and we can't wait to see what you're working on uh, next. So um, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I fucking can't. I can't wait. I love ah, Death Jeff, Stranding. Jeff Great game. One more thing. Oh, don't you dare. Oh, oh, one more thing. Oh, it's happening. Is it, are, we, are we seeing something? Anything? Wait, is this just a Death Stranding, like, upgrade or something? I thought we were going to get a trailer for the new game. Because I, I, I don't think that's a location that was ever in the game. Is this Death Stranding DLC? He's surely not making Death Stranding 2, is he? I feel like he wouldn't go the sequel route on that one, but maybe. Or is this... What is this? Is it DLC? It's a, it's like... it's It feels too late for DLC. <laughs> you know? It feels like if there was going to be DLC, it would have come out before now. But I don't know. Maybe? Maybe, 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 ooh. What's going on? <laughs> what am I seeing? What am I looking at? Drops it. Fuck! Oh, okay. Not so fragile after all. <laughs> Oh right, no. Fragile was just the name of the, of her, the the lady's uh, courier service, wasn't it? <laughs> what is going on? What is occurring? What? Okay, director's cut.
I have no idea what that means. What 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 is it? What does the director's cut actually add? Kojima, please. You're going to advertise there that. There you have it. Death Stranding director's cut finally confirmed. I hope I make it into the director's cut. <laughs> I'm told the full reveal is just weeks away. Stay tuned. All right, next. It's my honor okay. to welcome to Summer Game Fest a legendary actor who dedicated a whole episode of his Disney Plus show to exploring the world of Jeff gaming. Jeff Goldblum. And has been in games like Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And we're thrilled to have him here at Summer Game Fest. Jeff Goldblum, how are you, my friend? Thank you so much, J Joffrey or J Geoff or uh, sorry, uh, I think it's J I think it's Jeffrey. Hey, maybe it's Jeff. Hi, hi, hi Jeff. Uh, thank you so much, sincerely, for having me here. I'm thrilled to be here. Hey, I was watching your show, um, and I was wondering uh, if he there really might be do some be wearing video all that leather. game world premieres, as you say. Uh, and sure enough, yeah, uh, 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 there, there is. There is. Yes, we do like our world premieres around here. Any chance you uh, brought one with you today? Well, it's funny you say Jeff, that. Yes. He's like, you he's say, like pretending uh, that he's yes, actually I talking do. to this uh, pre-recorded message. <laughs> I've uh, got something here. I'm going to read it on this. There's a little bit of a teleprompter that they're putting up here. So I'm going to read something because I don't want to get it wrong. I wanna, I'm very meticulous about this. So here's a dramatic reading of this game announcement. Ready? I'm going to make the game announcement right now. Hello. I'm here to welcome you to a very different world. It's going to elevate you to new heights. It's going to submerge you to new depths. Maybe even challenge you to control chaos. Actually, it's gonna certainly challenge you to control chaos. It's a world um, so-called evolved. Total War Warhammer 3, that's adding chaos factions. Take a it? look at the, you guessed it, world premiere. Is it going to be that? That's the only thing I can think of with chaos right now is Total War Warhammer 3. Because I know that's a big thing they're adding is chaos factions, but that's a car, we so uh, probably not. All the warnings. <laughs> what the fuck is it then? Is it some Jurassic Park game, I guess, if Jeff Goldblum's there? Lessons. The way he focused on chaos made power. me think it was <laughs> fucking Warhammer. We played with genetics like, uh, like it was a toy. Probably should have guessed a Jurassic Park, given who they got to fucking introduce it. Big brain on me. Careful. Watch out. And now, uh, here we are. This is a very different world. It's a doggo! Jurassic World Evolution 2. I, I, I assume there was an Evolution 1 then. I certainly don't remember a Jurassic World game, but uh, sure. I have absolutely no idea what that is. <laughs> that trailer showed me nothing. Awesome. All right, this performer's <laughs> new album, Jubilee, is out now, and her book, Crying in H Mart, is a New York Times bestseller. Here now to perform Glider from the upcoming open world game Sable. By I may Raw have Fury to cut this Shedworks. out. It's Japanese breakfast. I'm going to have to cut this out probably because it's actual performance music. So I will see you in a sec. Okay, we back. That was very pretty. I'm sorry that I so had to cut that out. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Sable will be released on September 23rd this year. That's some news for you. And to nice. learn more about this amazing game, watch the Tribeca Game Showcase. That is tomorrow. It's got a very Sable unique art style. I don't know if I vibe of the with it completely, festival. but now, it's certainly unique. Today is just the start of Summer Game Fest. The song was the very devs good. With I Am 8-Bit and Double Fine will immediately follow the live show today. And there are more events coming all weekend and I'm just all extra month, cautious with songs Xbox that are like game actual on Sunday. It's proper be like... <laughs> Right now, though, we're bands to performing music or singers Western or whatever because uh, the music industry has been cracking down hard on game. places Welcome like Twitch and YouTube Lost Ark, recently. Like, they were, always, and Amazon they were always games. unhappy with things. And on YouTube, there's been more copyright than Twitch, copyright issues than Twitch. But even with Twitch now, the music industry is clamping the fuck down. And so I'm, I'm a bit nervous about Ark proper singers like that. So, yeah, you can understand why I've got a 
Gotta cut that out. From the half chain war. I'm sorry, this is an Amazon game? But now, our world has been torn once again. The demons have returned. With roaring destruction and waking nightmares. Is this, is this their MMO, New World, or whatever it was called? I am feeling like yes, probably. Oh boy, this music is probably fucking copyright as well. You hate to hear it. You truly hate to hear it. But I'm not going to cut out a game trailer. So I guess I'm just going to talk over it and pray. And really, really hope that nothing bad comes from this. Please, music industry. Why you do this? This has got to be... Is it? Is it not? I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Like, I'm actually I'm actually intrigued. But if it's an MMO, then the odds are it ain't coming to console. So, I don't know. We turn to myths to prove that not all is lost. This is actually looking pretty fucking sick. Like, I know it's Amazon. Oh wait, Lost Ark. Wait, that was the thing. You know what? I think he actually, I think he actually had that logo on screen. <laughs> I think he actually had that logo on screen before the thing started, and I completely spaced on it. Interesting. Sometimes when you play a game, so it's not that there, one thing in your inventory which turned out to hmm. be far more useful than you first realized. That's kind of like Prime Gaming. If you're an oh, Amazon boy. Prime <laughs> member, and most of you probably are, you get a ton of gaming goodies every month. This month, you can download Battlefield 4 and Batman the Telltale series completely free for PC. And there are special in-game benefits to do Batman and perks, the Telltale series GTA at some Online, point. Valorant, Apex Legends, and more. Still waiting to hear news on uh, awesome value. And honestly, the Wolf Among Us season two because I need to do Wolf Among Us season one, but I want to do it right before season two, right? So it, that's been so, in development a while. So head over to gaming.amazon.com to check out all the perks and free games which change every month. Because Telltale so died and then was resurrected, forever. and then they confirmed that it was in development again. And that was a while ago. Now that's going to be over a year at least. That looks pretty. Spit kiss? Excuse me? Was that game just called Spit Kiss? Did I read that right? Is my eyesight going in my old fucking age? Okay, right now I'm honored to be joined by Johanna Ferris, the new GM of Call of Duty. Johanna, it's so great to have you with What's us here. What's GM on stand for? Live. Grandmaster? So the Call new Grandmaster of Call know, of Duty. Uh, looks like next week, June 17th, season four. Yes, we're super excited. We're super honored I'm to not, be here. So thank you, first and foremost, I'm not for excited that. It's for just season such an amazing time for Call of, of Duty. Call of Duty. We're experiencing Gotta such transformational honest. growth and dynamism across the entire brand. You know, from premium title releases to everything we'll talk about wow, today. Wow, Call of Duty the, growing as a brand? With mobile, with I am truly sports, fucking so shocked to hear. super incredible, all the work. And shout out to everybody in the Call of Duty family. The biggest game in the world. Actually, yeah, no, no longer, know, right? Season three, like, it was Fortnite like, you know, is the biggest these days, I guess. But one of the highest selling games continually year, update the every game now year. with new stuff uh season four is coming next week what can you uh this is first info on it so what can you tell the fans watching around the world yeah we're there's stoked. gonna be it's new guns with new content yeah across cold war there's gonna be and war zone. new skins you know, you've got new weapons Woo! we've got new maps we've got badass new operators what a um, fucking I'm super excited shot about the hijacked gulag we've got expanded zombies content for everybody who loves that part of you know the gameplay experience so we're thrilled i used to love zombies i haven't played zombies in ages but zombies today. was I know, fucking got, excellent uh, back the in the day first look world premiere trailer of uh, season four so uh let's take a look at oh, that now. huge pog show me show me yes call of duty new season yes was that hijacked did they just show hijacked that was a great map you are tall and you get to live you understand That guy has got them crazy eyes. Cold War just turned off. Ah. Hi, 
hijacked! It is hijacked! Wow! I'm gonna... Never mind, I take it back! Season 4! Fuck yeah! I'm in! I'm in! What a great map. I'm not really in. That was a joke. But, hijack is excellent, and I, it does make me kind of want to play just that map again. Because that was a great map back in the day. Hijack is probably one of my favorite COD maps ever. Oh my god, that looks so fun. And one week away. One week away. All right, well, uh, let's move on to... Uh, you first joined Activision to run uh, Call of Duty Esports, and we're going to talk a little bit now about uh, what is the World Series of uh, Warzone, which is going to start on June the 22nd. I hear literally uh, nothing all, about tell us COD what Esports is World Series these Warzone. days. Yeah, we're I super excited it's still a big about thing. it. It's really a <laughs> but new I, I have not heard for us anything to highlight about it. competitive Call of Duty. You know, we've got great success going with Call of Duty League, and now we've got some of the biggest names in gaming battling it out in Verdansk for what will be the biggest prize pool in Warzone um, since it's launched, right? So um, we'll talk a little bit about <laughs> what that whole entails. Ten the custom pounds. lobby experiences, 150-player, <laughs> two-a-side squad. So I'm stoked to see how they uh, kind of rally here in Verdansk. Yes, uh, and coming up uh, very soon, June 22nd, uh, looks like, Looks like Twitch Rivals is going to be a part of this. Yeah, we are honored to be in partnership with Twitch. Oh, always, right? But certainly oh, here with always. World Series of Warzone. Oh, what and an honor. Partnering with Twitch Rivals, who's already done so much um, to really put competitive Warzone on display. So couldn't be in better partnership there. And uh, we're excited to have everybody tune in. Yes, uh, there is one thing, though, that everyone has been talking about online, and that's uh, who the captains are going to be uh, for the structure oh, yeah. of... Oh, uh, yeah. Man, everyone's been fucking talking event. about this. Um, I, I just can't uh, get it off my timeline. Just so much chatter about the captains. Just so yeah, much we chatter the about the captains. Five captains of the first of many events to come. Well, I've heard of him, uh, at least. Like I said, these are huge influencers and personalities in Call of Duty, and they also share our passion for competitive Call of Duty, right? They really believe in the promise of World Series of Warzone and to really level up. They really believe really in getting fucking so, paid, uh, yes. <laughs> couldn't be happier with some of these names, many of whom also hail from the Call of Duty League yes. family. Um, and I'm excited to see who kind of takes the cake here. We'll see. I was going to say, they're all be battling out uh, in just a couple well, weeks. Well, I support trial, Nate Shot because really he's... Exciting, uh, Actually, no, I, I know, much, I've heard uh, of Tim the Tap Man. He's growing into this kind of year-round experience. But I, I know a lot more so about Nate Shot. So I, I guess I'm supporting uh, There him. is a big new mainline game coming later this year too, right? Indeed, indeed. More details to share yes. later on, but uh, Sledgehammer Games is, you know, going to bring forward something truly incredible. So we're excited. It's right, Black Ops 12. <laughs> there will come a time and a place for that. All right, Johanna, thank you so much for joining us. We thank really you. appreciate it. All right, we've got lots of Summer Game Fest kickoff to go, but right now we've got a surprise guest well, joining us. Well, we're half an hour in, and I feel like we've Canadian seen fuck all so far. Ryan there's been, Reynolds. There's hey, been more talking than there has actual well, thank trailers. thank you, Jeff. And hello, Summer Game Fest. Hello, Ryan now, Reynolds. I, When's Deadpool 3 happening? Thinking, and no, I'm, I'm not here to announce I'm the star of Elden Ring. I think. Instead, no, I'm making, uh, I'm telling you to talk about good old-fashioned movies. You remember those things? Of course you don't. Look, um, I have a new movie coming out August 13th called Free Guy, um, and in this movie I play an NPC character uh, in a popular... I actually remember the trailer for this coming out before, uh, I'm pretty sure it was before and COVID happened. It kind of and sucks to be I a you know, it lonely background character right. on an endless walk cycle. And then that's the last so time I thought about it for the last year and a quarter or how long it's, it's been. It's the first ever look at our cast on the big screen this August. And honestly, it's been so long I can't even remember who's even in this movie. I didn't say that. I'll cut that out. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be cutting that out as that well because I'm pretty sure if I re-upload what is essentially an entire like trailer for a film, then uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're going to have some issues with me. So, yeah, going to cut that out as well. Don't worry, it was just a fucking film trailer. The only interesting part was it had some influences in it like Pokimane and Ninja and Jacksepticeye and that lot. Oh, hey, it's a Mogus. That's pretty sus. Red sus. Out the air lock. Memes. Ah, oh, yes. The classic name your thing as the color you are. Oh, wait, they're new colors. They're showing off new colors. Right, okay, that's more acceptable. And maybe we'll even take a nap. Okay.
It's been a while since I played any Among Lots Us. Lots of fun it's still a good ahead. Game. And speaking of Among Us, last and year still you getting like the a fucking million players Jeff a day. Healy <laughs> mask was available as a Twitch drop around the Game Awards, never to be seen again. In fact, I often hear on Twitter from people who get booted from games with the mask because uh, folks think that they're hacked. Well, never fear. Today, the mask is back. Just head to Twitch, connect your account, and watch 15 minutes or more of Kickoff Live to get your very own Jeff Keighley mask once again. And then it goes back into the vault. I don't know what's going on. All right. Speaking of independent developers, now I'm very happy to welcome to Summer Game Fest the head of indies at PlayStation, a legend in his own right who has some exciting things to share, Shuhei Yoshida. Hi, Shu. Nice. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, everyone. I'm Shuhei Yoshida. Are we going to get to see some Kina? Indies. Kina Bridge of Spirits? What I love about working with Come on, with show me some Kina. That game looks fucking excellent. Are the new and unexpected games that they create which allows us to offer an array of unique experiences for players. In my role as Sony, it's very exciting to get to meet with these talented studios, which sometimes can be one person or a small group of friends, to help nurture their ideas and bring them to the PlayStation fans. One example that is, not is it. from <laughs> Finji, who has been working with Greg Lobanov, the developer of Wonder Song, to publish their new game, Chikori, A Colorful Tale. Chikori released today and gives players a chance to experience a coloring book style world where players use their painting powers to explore, solve puzzles, make friends, and draw on anything. Check out Chikori, A Colorful Tale on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 after the show. Mm, As a huge pass. Soulstone <laughs> Games fan, I totally enjoyed the beautiful 2D action adventure Salt and Sanctuary a few years ago. The developer Ska Studios has been hard at work on a new title, which I'm proud to present to you, Salt and Sacrifice. Salt and Sacrifice. I never played Salt and Sanctuary, but I know it's got its following. So I guess this Our is a sequel. will catch up with us. Given a second chance, I spoke the words. I drank the mage bane. I live now only to hunt mages. Inquisitor. There aren't many of us. But together, we, we will tame the, the chaos. chaos. Interesting. It looks like uh, a game I played called Death's Gambit, which was essentially a 2D Souls-like. That was able to fucking share hard. A brand new trailer from <laughs> Don't know if I want to play a game like that again. Game, Solar Ash, which is coming to that was so brutal. This year. Death's Gambit. Hardest 2D game I've played, that's for sure. Ooh, Annapurna. I always perk up for Annapurna. What have you got for me? Ooh, we've seen this one before. This is Solar Ash. Is this Solar Ash, I think? That's the name that's jumping out at me. This one does look cool, for sure. And Annapurna only publishes good shit for the most part, so.
Solar Ash 2021. That looks so, so great. Can't wait to see it later this year. Now, this week, there is a ton of video games. I still feel like I don't really know what it's about. Game launching across <laughs> We've seen it a few PC, times now, but I have no Chivalry idea. Chivalry 2, which brings 64-player multiplayer medieval battles to life. Sledgehammers, swords, axes, you name it. And it comes from Torn Banner Studios in my hometown of Toronto, Canada. Here's a look at the launch trailer for Chivalry 2, which you can play right now. This is definitely not my thing, but uh, it does look cool for the people whose thing it is, for sure. For every warrior, there comes a time when a moment will decide your fate. As the throng of battle echoes against steel and shield, as we cry out towards eternity, Find yourself in this moment! Ignite the fire of your soul! And survive this day! Fall before me! Another victory! For Agatha! Honestly, I don't think those dudes are being particularly chivalrous. I feel like that's kind of the opposite of what chivalry is. This month, Valorant from Riot celebrated its one-year anniversary, and starting next Monday, June 14th, Christ, that's gone Prime quickly. That Valorant's been out a year already. Card to celebrate the one-year anniversary. Riot are going to take over the fucking world one day, man. <laughs> it's like they got the world's the biggest MOBA. They got the, the world's game, biggest shooter. They're gonna they're developing an MMO at the moment. If that MMO lands and lands well, June 25th. Well, they're just gonna have the fucking holy trinity. Agent. Who could it be? Well, here's your first very, very exclusive but very, very quick tease to whet your ap appetite with more to be revealed later this month during Summer Games. How quick is very, very quick? Let's count the seconds, shall we? One, two, three, four, five. Amazing. We're talking five entire seconds. What's the fucking point? I told you it was very, very quick. <laughs> what is All the right. point? Uh, warring PMC factions face off against each other in Escape from Tarkov, the popular multiplayer first-person shooter video game developed by Battlestate Games. Today, we've got an exclusive new look at the streets of Tarkov, the new area of the game. Oh, 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 don't hang. Don't hang. I'm pretty sure Tarkov's PC only, right? So, can't play this one. One day, one day I'll get a PC. One day. But fuck, man, a good PC is expensive. <laughs> and I don't want to get just a regular PC because then I'll just have to be upgrading it, like, soon anyway. So I'd rather get... I'd rather save up and get a properly good one that won't need to change for a while. But that is a mish. That is going to be a while. From what I know about this game, this is the one where you, like, you build up a collection of shit that you pick up and then you have to extract from the map whilst keeping your shit and then you can use the shit that you take in future missions. But if you die, then you lose it all, right? I feel like I would just have, like, you know how I save my potions in RPGs and stuff and never use them because I might need them later. I feel like I'd never take good gear into the into the game because I'd be like, well, what if I lose it? And it's like, yeah, but that's the entire point. <laughs>
I feel like that trailer could have been about half the length that it was. <laughs> Here are a lot of hallways. Here's another hallway. This is a hallway. Here we will show you a hallway. You know? <laughs> when I was a kid, the simulation games of Peter Molyneux were some of my favorites. Adding that extra salt on the fries in the theme park to increase your drink sales was so devilish. I love well, to add extra salt to the videos I make. Went on to create Two Point Studios and Two Point Hospital. Well, today we're excited to share the first trailer for their next Two, two Point simulation, Two Point Campus. Two Point Campus. Okay, interesting, interesting. I never played Two Point Hospital, but that's very popular. The school gates, the scent of a leather-bound book, the faint clatter of knights jousting. Well, I can't say I remember that part, though it wasn't like this in my day. You see, campuses are forever changing. Nowadays, education has to be fun. It can't be all work and no play, and quite right, too. Frankly, the results speak for themselves. Academia has never been more appealing, more dynamic, more whatever this is. Today's campus is a place to live and a place to learn. Finely crafted by the sharpest minds that money can buy. Though sometimes you still can't get the staff. Yes, these days it really does feel as though anything is possible. Class is in session 2022. That looks good. Gotta say. That looks really good. And it is coming to consoles. This year, so I am thrilled to have Netflix maybe, as a part maybe of I'll Summer give that Game a go. Fest. They have been doing an incredible job good. adapting games with series like Castlevania and the Dota anime. Well, there is a lot more coming. And you don't have to wait long to find out more. Tomorrow, I'm honored to be guest hosting Netflix's Geeked Week live stream with Mari Takahashi and Rahul Kohli. Uh, you can expect the first clip of the Cuphead show, which, spoiler the alert, Cuphead show? this show is going to be an absolute sensation. I can't wait for you to see it. I'll also sit down with the Are team Are we still waiting Arcane, to get that Cuphead the DLC? Animated show How many years has that been? Let me Google that. We might also have updates on the Let Witcher and that. the live action Resident Cuphead. Evil series. Geek the Week is streaming live tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Last Here's a sneak course. Peek. Announcement. What is Geek Week? Netflix Geek is hosting a free virtual event full of big news, exciting first looks. And Cuphead DLC announcement trailer released 10th Netflix. of June 2018. Comics, it's been movies, three years. Zombies, animation, sci fi. It's been three years. How is it still not out? It's a DLC. A Witcher and much more. People you love from the shows you love live. That's Grab insane. Your voices, tuck in and join Netflix Geeks for Geeks Week. There's are they so are they are they pulling a about. fucking Team Cherry and surprise our DLC is now an entire we game or something? Just like, yet, though. Coming up next how is does Smite, a DLC a cross -play, and like it must have been in the works before the announcement, right? IP it's been announced you for three last years. This shit's been going Avatar longer than Elden Ring. Bender one. Uh, um, well, as Smite enters its ninth year, it's time to go upside down. Wait, what? <laughs> They're adding Stranger Things to Smite? Are we getting a Stranger Things Season 4 trailer soon? That'd be fucking nice. It's been a while since Stranger Things Season 3. Let me Google that as well. Stranger Things Season 3 release date. Uh, July 4th, 2019. It has been two years. It has been two years since Stranger Things Season 3. I could certainly do with a Season 4. Get that down my throat. I could not do with Stranger Things in Smite, though. I couldn't give a fuck about that. Gonna be brutally honest there.
I very much struggle to care. Oh. Pop-ups coming up at the top. No, thank you. Go away. <laughs> Next up, we announce a lot of games on my shows, but I think this is the first time we are announcing an entirely new game label, new game publisher. Enjoy this first look at more than 12 games that make up its initial slate. A new game publisher, what? Sometimes I ask myself what, what it all means. Let's begin. I'm intrigued. I'm Is that who you are? My purpose makes me who I am. I finally have the feeling we're doing something worthwhile. Being relied on to succeed where others would fail. <laughs> Cool. Some of them looked great. I've got no idea which title goes with which fucking game images they there showed. There you have but... it. Prime Matter, Payday 3 2. And there is actually one more game. Payday 3 2. The sequel to Payday that, 3 before it's even been out. Oh, Todd, no. how you doing? Yeah, that looked, that looked cool. Jeff, I mean, some of those the trailers definitely there. looked I'm interesting. Really some of them definitely did not. <laughs> so I don't know which edition, title which links is, up with which that one. Saber but... and Prime Matter are working together on a new game in the Painkiller franchise. What's the Painkiller franchise? All right, very cool on that. And there are more details on Prime Matter coming tomorrow with a stream at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, and I will be stopping by. Next up is a brand new IP from a brand new studio, Stray Bombay. It's coming this fall only to Xbox, PC, and Game Pass on day one. It's called The Anacrusis, a four-player cooperative first-person shooter set aboard a massive starship stranded at the edge of explored space. You team up with your friends in an infinitely replayable fight against alien hordes to unlock perks, weapons, and new ways to play that you can share with your team. Here well, is the world Well, sounds like trailer. it's probably not for me already, but let's have a look. <laughs> four player only? Like, you have to have four players? I mean, I assume it has matchmaking. Hello? But if you're not a single yes, player story focused game, you've got to do a lot Leo! to draw me in, you know? Stick together and let's do this. Is this a disco? Yeah, this doesn't look great, this does I it? Do not like it. I can use some help. Hit your pulse. This is not good. This is not good. What if we open the doors and run? Just run. No stopping, no shooting, just straight to the bridge. It looks like Call of Duty Zombies, but without, with a slightly different art style and a lot less polish, <laughs> is the vibe I'm getting from that, unfortunately. Heavy. Really? We call them tanks. I call them brutes. From Latin, brutus. We'd sound smart calling them brutes. Eon, you don't want to get in here and help name these? No, I'm good. Brute! Meh.
Yeah, that didn't uh, that didn't grab me. Oh well. <laughs> awesome look. Thanks for that chat and the team at Stray Bombay. Uh, tomorrow, tune into Summer Game Fest for a special deep dive presentation on New World, a new open world MMO from Amazon Games, set on the supernatural. I'm so curious how Eternal. that turns out. It's man. finally coming out later this summer, and in the deep Being dive video, Being delayed so game hard. Director Amazon Scott have had so many problems. They released the one game and then unreleased it. A world of wonder and like the horror. first time a game's ever arrive, been properly released. Like this game is out there and. And then enemy, unreleased tempest, and then cancelled. That's so funny. To the game, what? Including new you released the game content, more PvE and, and then you cancelled it challenges with after you released bosses, it. Loot, and what? Six of these Unheard of. will be at launch with the closed beta on July 20th and the public launch on August 31st. Absolutely I will also unheard be down of. at the studio to chat with Scott about the game and the team's efforts over the past year in the midst of COVID. It is exciting for me to finally be able to get out there and visit game studios again. I miss all these developers. So check out the special deep Do dive you? stream on New World. Do tomorrow you? Or are you Pacific glad you had a bit of a fucking rest? Summer game he is so busy, man. Jeff Keighley, like, right, he must well, sleep back in one hour a night. Rocket League teamed up with Dude's Fast a mad and man. Furious. I rate some it. some of the saga's most iconic cars into the game. And now they are back with a twist that is truly Rocket League with Fast 9, the next installment of the Fast Saga arriving in U.S. theaters June 25th. Psyonix is bringing back the Nissan Skyline, Dodge Charger, and, well, maybe the most literal, supersonic, acrobatic, rocket-powered heist car ever conceived, the F9 Pontiac Fiero. Oh, boy. That means a lot to me. Hooray! I I remember this from a trailer. Yeah, Fast and Furious. Woo! How exciting! I'm pretty sure I saw a bunch of cars drive out playing in one Fast and Furious trailer. And play soccer. I've seen. Seems like the right idea to me. The none Fast and Furious of those films. Three car Maybe bundle one? arrives June 17th none, none in Rocket League. Okay, next up, last year, a new Swedish company named Shark Mob released a teaser for their first unnamed multiplayer project in the Vampire the Masquerade Can we get universe. some single player, Tonight, please? <laughs> we're putting a name on their first game with a brand new world premiere trailer. World premiere. Shark Mob. Meow. Man, I really wish that Kojima had been able to show whatever new game he's working on. I feel like there's been not much there for me so far. There's been like two or three things that I'm like, yeah, this, this looks interesting. But nothing that's blown me away, you know. Maybe they'll end with Elder Ring though, right? Let me fucking attach my mask full of copium. Maybe they'll end on Elden Ring. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Oh, that's some good copium. They're deaf. They're showing it. They're showing it. Oh yeah, for sure. It's happening. Come on. Come on, Elden Ring. Be there, please. Yep. This sure do be looking like a multiplayer game. With a couple of powers and shit. That motherfucker decided to go up close and personal with someone with a sword. Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. What happened to Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2? Has that gone into development hell? I, I think can't wait to play this game, and we actually won't have to wait long. You can sign up now for the bloodhunt.com, is where you go, for the closed alpha PC test, available on July 2nd. Blood I would be Hunt will sure be not to do that. Later this year. 
Next, the latest horror game series from the creators of Until Dawn continues with the House of Ashes, uh, part of the, the Dark, Dark Pictures, Pictures anthology. Not this great. Third game features American I played and Man of Medan. It was in a pretty temple. crap. Gonna, the story gonna just trailer say that. The <laughs> so I ignored the, the second one, uh, which was... I don't remember. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the second one got reviewed even worse than the first one. So, yeah, it's not going great. And I look forward to not playing the third one either. Man of Madame was really bad though. <laughs> oh, I'd completely forgotten. From its slumber I'd completely and is forgotten that for game, blood. and now I'm sad that I've remembered Shall we it. see how many have fallen into shadow? Satellite sweeps of the war zone have uncovered what appears to be an underground storage facility. But I strongly suspect it's where chemical weapons are hidden, so we need to move fast. Oh yeah, chemical weapons, it's gonna be all in their head! It's not going to be a real threat! Oh, what a surprise! Extremely brave. Or extremely foolish. We're gonna sigh up this shit. Brothers in arms, or will it be a case of each man for himself. Get down, get down! They're up on the race! Return fire! You teeter on the edge of an abyss. Oh, shit. Your survival depends on the choices you make. They will be as a compass guiding you through the unknown. They're on God's green earth that we landed. What nightmare have these luckless souls fallen into? You keep lookout. Look out for what? One by one, no. their lights Fucking will be snuffed out. Unless you can find the means to save them. Trapped beneath the earth, swallowed we have to move. Let's go. by the void. Will you find the path to salvation? Or be lost in the darkness? Forever. Uh, let's go with Lost in Darkness forever. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> oh my god, they're actually releasing some kind of fucking collector's edition. Do you really think it's that popular? I'm pretty sure it's not, right? First one, shit. Second one, worse. One of Third the one, longest, collector's most beloved edition? JRPG franchises in the industry is the Tales of series. Well, the latest game, Arise, was announced two I've years ago. I've heard good things about the Tales of series, but the only issue there is it's with Unreal huge. Engine 4. Here's a world premiere look at the latest trailer with more information following in the coming weeks. The Tales of series is so fucking huge. I'd have to dedicate like a year to just playing it, if not more. And I just don't think I can do that. And it spans multiple consoles and shit as well. So I don't know if I even can do it, even if I wanted to. And I kind of do want to, because I've heard Fancy nothing but positive things about this series. Harmony and but it's just like, here's 10 games, and they're all 100 hours long. It's like, oh, fuck me. And it's not like, it's not like they're each standalone. You need my skills on the they're all connected. All <laughs> so you, you have to play them in order, peace. kind of thing. As far as I'm aware. I'm Captain Kisara of the Elder Men and Sea Ha! But I am interested. From now on, when I fight, I fight to protect my dream. Well, this crew just gets bigger and bigger. The Renans. Seems the rumors you were running with them were true. Love to stand against darkness. That's my favorite. Been looking for you. Get the hell out of my realm! This is Tannin's realm and it's ours, understand? Is it over? It's only just begun. Oh, that's a fucking classic, isn't it? That is a, that is a true classic. Tales of Arise, I, again, yeah. I'm interested, but I don't think I can play it because I haven't played the previous, like, nine fucking games. <laughs> and I mean, it may be something where you can start there, but you just will be missing out on a ton of stuff, but I hate doing that, so. I don't know, man. I feel like if I ever play those games, I will be playing through all of them in release order, and... For Summer Game Fest, we have a special announcement. such a commitment. 
that the console version of Sky Children of the Light would arrive to Nintendo Switch on June 29th. The, the, the console the version of what? season would start soon after on July 6th. Enjoy the game. Sky. Didn't it have a subtitle? I thought it had a subtitle. One of the things I take great pleasure in is using a platform like this show to introduce you to new developers and studios with games that deserve the spotlight. That's definitely the case with this next title from a small Swedish studio named Wishfully. Planet of Lana tells the story of a young girl and her loyal friend who embark on a mission through a colorful world that's designed to feel like a gouache watercolor painting come to life. Here's your first look okay. at the Planet of Lana coming to Xbox and PC in 2022. Man, it's been another over half hour. There's 25 minutes left. We're getting down to the wire and there's been nothing particularly mind blowing yet. Oh dear. Oh, is it gonna be, is it gonna be a disappointing show? But wait, wait, what's this? It's my thing full of copium again. <sighs> Mmm, Elden Ring coming real soon. We're seeing Elden Ring in the next 25 minutes. Okay, this looks cute though. I'm all for a vibe. I'm all for a, a, a moody kind of vibe. I mean, is this moody? Not really. It's vibey, not moody. I feel like this is this is the trailer that's shown the least so far, but it's also the one that I am most interested in just from that one shot. That was that was a really nice shot. And it's very pretty. And I'm liking the music. The little that we are just hearing now. A hand painted adventure, fuck yeah. That's cool. Enough for eyes, mate. Planet of Lana, subtitle, and Off Earth Odyssey. Do you really need the subtitle? Can we bin the subtitle? I'm done with subtitles. There's, there's too many subtitles in games now, and they make YouTube titles incredibly fucking difficult, let me tell you. We have a limited number of spaces, and if your subtitle is three words long, that means I can use like a five word actual title for the episode! You don't understand the struggle! The struggle is real! But no, that did look cool. <laughs> but uh, if, I, if I end up playing that, I will not be putting that subtitle in there, because that would I, would... I would not be able to actually name the episode. What a beautiful artistic game. Honor to have that on our Overwatch show. Well, joining 2. Joining me now is oh, Eric Keller, boy. who's the game director of Jeff Overwatch Kaplan 2. Jeff Kaplan quit. Aaron, uh, great to that have you gives here me on Kickoff Live. Thanks my, for my already zero so faith in Overwatch yeah, 2 is now negative faith. I've, I've got you guys negative a, faith a that Overwatch 2 will be good. Because the only thing keeping it as a possibility of being good in my mind was Jeff Kaplan and he quit. He Overwatch quit. 2's format is changing to a 5v5 team it's format. It's probably going to This suck. requires a fresh look at all of our heroes. They redesigned the all the characters and new, all of them look worse. Familiar to fans of our strategic team-based combat. I have not seen combat. a single yeah, character uh, redesigned that playing, looks better and, uh, than the you know, originals. Long what are you for doing, Blizzard? To to go hands -on with it. What are you um, doing? And today, I know you brought us a look at uh, some skins for some of the uh, some of the characters. Please, right? show yeah, me these skins. Yeah, the team is so Please. passionate about updating Please the look good. and the feel of I the world I loved of these characters so and much in my year and a half that I played Overwatch. entirely new models for Overwatch 2 for all of our heroes. It was, it was before So today, we're going to be looking at two of YouTube. those, uh, Baptiste and Sombra. All right, well, let's take a look here, and I know you're going to tell us a little bit about what we're seeing, but uh, it's so cool I just fucking played the shit Overwatch out of Overwatch. Yeah, what do we got here? Yeah, for so a year this is Baptiste. Half. Nothing else. Um, and there's a lot it of replaced, new technology it that goes into Call of our Duty models. For me. Uh, we have I love new these characters. Or <laughs> hair shader and I really feel like me. they're being done um, dirty by Overwatch 2 so far from what I've seen. With his haircut, he also has a glowing cape and gloves that kind of give that medic or surgeon vibe to him. Um, Thank you. And uh, we're gonna Sombra. Sombra. Yep. Sombra. So next up is Sombra. This I love a Sombra. very challenging look for us to update. There's, it's an asymmetrical design. There's so many layers of hair and clothing and technology in this. If you look closely, you can actually see circuitry and nodes 
embedded in her clothing. She is a world-class hacker, so it all makes sense. Okay, that one does look actually pretty good. I'll so give it that. It's great for fans to see these characters you know and love. Uh, I really do love Sombra. The first game <laughs> updated for Overwatch uh, 2. I have, I have zero faith see, that's going to be uh, more fucking on the good game. Man. We appreciate you giving us I just want a proper Overwatch sure story campaign, and they're, they're Overwatch. doing some kind of you campaign bet, thing, you. but it awesome. looks more right, like much, some... Uh, it doesn't look like what I'm looking for. I had a chance to play Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance with the game developer Jeff Hadden. I want a proper story focused Ember Moon from the WWE. Overwatch That's right. You didn't expect thing. me to say that. But this game is a ton of fun and it's And they just don't seem to, to want to make it as far as June I can tell. 22nd. Maybe I'm maybe take I'll be surprised. Maybe the campaign they're making is actually what I'm looking for, but it really looks like it's more of a series of wave defenses with very minimal actual story there, I don't know. A couple of weeks it is is Dark it just me or has it just got suddenly very quiet? <laughs> Jeff, one of the game developers from 2K, Jeff. Special guests, Hannibal Burris and Ember Moon. Okay, okay. What is uh, Ember that's Moon? Trap. Oh, it's my counterpart. Oh, 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 oh my god. Traps. Ow. Oh, oh shit. Oh, I know you get I know. <laughs> A warrior's death, I died again. I'm coming to get you. Hey, hey, oh. hey. Watch it. Oh. oh. <laughs> Oh no. Did we not oh no, like learn five years I'm ago that people this people is not the way down. to show off games by Jennifer, having a bunch really of people to talking drinking. over Absolutely. gameplay footage and books like attempting to make actually. it look fun, but it always just comes off like forced. To the point where my like it could actually be fun, but when you have people, when you have this kind of trailer for it, it never looks it. I just love everything about him that he's just constantly the good guy the entire time. Oh. oh! Oh! What the? Oh f man! How, how long chef. have we got left? Twenty minutes. Uh, that Oof! Look healthy, Oof! Twenty minutes. Oh, why did I just All run right, up on him like that? Let well, me see I'm what you now. got. You so ain't what? got nothing on us, baby. I'm here now. Oh! 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 oh, oh, oh. I spoke oh. way too soon. <laughs> we got him. We got him. Come on! He's gone. Come on! He's gone. Come on! We don't want any. It's just attempting to be funny, and it's not funny. Let's go! Damn! What a nobody likes watching the forced banter. Oh, he flipped us off. All the forced laughter. Oh, oh my poor heart. I can't take it. <laughs> Come on, 20 minutes. Something sick. It's Paladin. I said something sick. Oh boy. Is this going to be copyright music? Let's talk loudly over it so that I don't get copyrighted. That would suck. That would be a shame. It would put me in a lot of physical pain. It's copyright. It's Paladin, it's copyright. It's the game that tried to be Overwatch. But unfortunately, Overwatch kind of took a big dump on it. And nobody played. Well, actually, that's not true. Some people played. It, it, got, it got its own fan base. But it did get shit on by Overwatch. All right, okay, Summer Game go. Fest kickoff live presented by Prime Gaming continues. Yesterday was an amazing tease of the next Battlefield from EA. Mm, if you want to I watched dust that. On the history that looked good. I'm definitely going to be buying the new Battlefield. Uh, that was Battlefield. Play some multiplayer with mates and stuff. This month, Prime Gaming members get to download it and play it for free through June 20th. I now, played no Battlefield 4 quite a lot, PC version of the and then I tried Battlefield, Battlefield 1 and didn't really like it, and then ignored 5 because nobody seemed to like it. Right now, but if you are this Amazon new one, Battlefield Prime 2042, and this potentially Sunday, good. Xbox Obviously, it was just a CGI trailer, but I liked what I saw. It's back to near future setting, which I love. I didn't like one, really cool. and I never played 5, I didn't like 1 because they're both past war historical settings, which I don't really care about. I much prefer near future at the story trailer so uh, i'm glad that it's going back there and yeah i'm definitely in on the new battlefield even though it's not something that i'd be like uploading to youtube because it's mod player but you know ah! uh, wings of ruin you don't understand that rathalos is That Rathalos is... We can't let you interfere with our plans. That's the monster Red Song. I'm vibing with this music. I saw this coming. 
won't let you awaken it. Yeah, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin. I've never played Monster Hunter, apart from the beta for World. So, you're going to be born, huh? Well, I hope so. Or I couldn't speak to you now. Pre-order bonus. Order the game early so you don't miss out on an outfit for and it's gone. And more amiibo. And more, uh, sinking of save data stuff. Yeah. Next, this legendary rock band hits the road this summer on the Hello Mega Tour with Green Day and Fall Out Boy. But first, they came together with an indie developer to create stream-safe music for the community. Uh, yes, huge you can co-stream this performance. So turn it up. Premiering their brand new Brilliant. Never okay, well, I guess I won't song. cut this one out then. Tell me and then watch me get fucking copyright claims anyway. Break, this is Weezer. Don't you dare fucking copyright claim this, you music industry pricks. What game is this? Did they say what game this is? Yeet. I won't mention any names. I find it quite fucking funny that he specifically says before this performance, yes, you can co-stream this. But he didn't give any warning before the previous couple, before the uh, film thing or before the previous music performance, that you can't co-stream that one. So people who aren't aware of what's going on in the music industry and copyright claiming, etc., are going to get fucked on those. Because they gave no warning. They only said for this one, yes, this one you can. Yeah, you know what? That was pretty good. Props. Props to them. I, I'm sure I that know some of their so other songs, amazing. but uh, I couldn't uh, tell you any, you but that was pretty good. For that, both the song and the game released tomorrow on PC, Nintendo Switch, music streaming platforms, Twitch soundtrack, Still unsure what the game was, really, but sure. limited <laughs> edition 7-inch vinyl on I Am 8-Bit. All right, well, right now, let's turn to a game that we announced last year at the Game Awards. Endless Dungeon Endless from Amplitude. Dungeon. I we don't showed a remember brief this. Glimpse of gameplay in December. <laughs> Is that a worry? Fans wanted more. Well, here's an extended look 
at Endless Dungeon. Can can fans can there be fans of a game that isn't even out? I, I guess. I mean, fucking Elden Ring. We're stuck in this rat I guess until you, people are excited for Elden Ring. I guess you couldn't really call anyone a fan of Elden Ring. We know literally nothing. All of them. Rule number one: Certain weapons work better on certain monsters. Learn it or die. Oh, option B then. Rule number two, use turrets to protect that unstable dust bomb we call the crystal. Because it's their catnip. And if it goes, you go. Yep, just like that. Rule number three, watch your squat. Even if you've got the guns, the turrets, and the crystal, you can't do everything by yourself. If you fight alone, you die alone. Ugh, together again. And rule number four? Well, if you've got all that going, but you still can't win, you gotta change the squad. Tag team. I'm in. Eh. Eh. We got. What are you guys we doing got tonight? Ten minutes if you're left. lucky enough to have a PS5, we got ten you're minutes left. Getting ready to bring out round three of the copium. Apart. Elden Ring is about to show up. <gasps> yeah. Oh yeah, Mac that's is good copium. <gasps> come on, come on, come on Elden Ring. Take it away. Come on, Marcus and Mike. Wait, what was this? I wasn't hey listening. Jeff and everybody watching <laughs> oh, Summer Games cool, Fest cool. kickoff live. Marcus Smith here, creative director at Insomniac Games for Ratchet and Clank Rift. Nice. Apart. I'm gonna be playing this. We're excited that players finally get a the chance. The reviews to came play out. The, the reviews were fucking glowing. They were shining. They were polished at to a mirror Pacific, sheen. 5 p.m. Eastern to live stream the first hour of Rift Apart. Isn't that right, Mike? That's right. I'm Mike Daly. It the comes out tomorrow, uh, Friday. In addition to so I will be playing it Friday game. evening, we'll and the series will start on Saturday. And talking about what it was like to develop the game behind the scenes. So please join us at twitch.tv slash insomniac games at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Some of the set pieces that they've shown off in trailers and stuff look gorgeous. We'll see, see you there. Really does look pretty. I'm looking forward All to right, trying that. All right, we're now about to be joined by the one and only John Carlo Esposito to talk Far Cry Six. Uh, John Carlo, thank you for joining us. So, why is that you really how you pronounce it, John? Role? <laughs> they came to me with this phenomenal idea. Uh, I love this dude. He's so fucking that good. I play Anton Castillo, the leader he of Yara. He is so fucking good. Big Breaking Bad, obviously. Mandalorian, obviously. It, it really appealed to I'm me sure he's done a bunch of other shit, but that's what I mainly know him first for. First came from a love of his family. Breaking Bad, love especially, of his is the one. He is a country. fucking And it was so God. in, in, in oh, line man. with what's going on in the world politically today and what has happened in the past. I thought, what a great opportunity. The other part of it is it's just a different technology that's so brand new. And it excites me as a filmmaker that I wanted to be a part of it. All right, well, you've played some absolutely amazing villains in your career. What was it like being a video game villain? No, I'm not a villain. I have to, I got to push back on you. I'll let you finish. <laughs> but this guy loves his country. He wants to empower you, Keely. He wants to empower you to stand up and speak your truth. Now, you can go back to calling me a villain if you like. Well, you are smiling on the box. You're a good guy, right? I am because I, I feel like we as human beings fall in line and I, I, I want to be a renegade within reason. How do you like that? Because I think part and parcel of us falling in line and doing what we need to do and thinking about the cumulative effect of our doing what's right and the example of that is also to stand up and say, no, I do agree that they're good and bad about all people, but this guy, out of his love and passion for his people, even if they're faceless to him at certain points in time, allow him to be an absolute hero. Uh, speaking of your character, who did you base him on or study to create this character? 
it's so interesting because of course the the obvious choice to study is Fidel Castro and it is Cuba an island that had so many resources but really the dream of the ability of the dictator to cultivate those resources something got in the way there and hopefully that can change in the years to come it's funny you asked me that question because i was just talking to one of my daughters about Ceausescu and and uh, oh, how, also sorry? hitler uh because we were talking about zodiac signs and what signs were certain people what is that mindset that has you wanting to be have power over others. Oh no, I take uh, it back. I take it back. He, he believes in the zodiac Chesky and studied political science. He believes what star college. sign you're born under influences your life. So anyway, so <laughs> All right, well, one last question for you. Uh, who would win in a square off between Gus Fring, Moff Gideon and Anton? You know, and I have my favorites in those two. So you asked me this question. Um, uh, and and you know, immediately I say Moff Gideon immediately. You know, somehow I, I think Gus is colder and displays that coldness in a very particular way. Uh, you know, I think Anton could be the most violent man on earth, uh, but given his situation, he may not be rise to that occasion or may not have the time. Moff Gideon is otherworldly. This guy thinks in a different way and he knows what you're thinking before you say it. And he, he does all his own dirty work. And he has an incredible tool to help him out. So I'm going to say Moff Gideon. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, uh, John Carlo, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We will check out the revolution in Far Cry 6. And I can't wait. Guys, for there's it to five begin. minutes Let left. Let the games begin. <laughs> guys. Guys, awesome. we're going to see right, Elden Ring, so right? Much, right, guys? If you haven't picked up on it yet, right. Prime Gaming unlocks a ton guys. of in-game benefits for Amazon we're, Prime members. We're about to see... Like an exclusive Valkyrie we're about skin to see Elden Ring. Legends. Yeah. $200,000 in yeah. GTA cash every week you play GTA Online. Right. And in Fall Guys, you get Jeff. a special Burning Jeff. Circuits costume for your being through June Based 21st. Jeff. Now, speaking of Fall Guys, the time has come to reveal a brand new costume coming to the game. That's Based not what I want to hear, Jeff. Game franchise. Check it out. I'm not looking for new Fall Guys costumes. That game, I haven't, I haven't even thought about that game since the Game Awards, where you showed another. Never mind, it's 2B. Never mind, I'm going back to Fall Guys today. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. This Genshin Impact. I know this game made an impact on people. <laughs> oh, that was my worst joke yet. Yeah, I'm flagging. I'm flagging because we still have not seen Elden Ring. The light in their vision will fade away. Organizing the clash is my way of uncovering hidden. I know people did really like this, but I never got around to it. It just seemed like a pretty. Opponent is new to the clash. I don't know. Quickly become the dark It could be something that I would like, but. The gacha element of it. Sounds I'm just like, eh. Into a clamor of noise during stormy weather. I'm not a fan of gacha, even though apparently this was a game which had a lot of content in it. Clouds high. The birds come. Yeah, Genshin. It apparently had a lot of content, and the gacha was like secondary. So but... today we've announced games, a publisher, Prime Matter. So why not announce a developer too? And joining me now are Dave Anthony and Jason Blundell from the newly Jason Blundell. Aviation That's the fucking games. cod zombies, uh, motherfucker. We know you guys well from all your amazing work over the years at Treyarch and Call of Duty Black Ops. But uh, what can we expect? Jason from Blundell, your new studio, I'm guys? making well, thanks, Call thanks, of and, uh, Service look, Jason Zombies. And I, we've been mates for donkey's years, <laughs> and well, like an old married couple, Jeff. And uh, we've been working together for decades. And we've worked on some huge franchises. You know the games, you know, they've done well. And, uh, but we thought, you know, when you're working on those franchises, the long established IPs, you're working within very, very tight constraints creatively about what you can do. So we thought after all these years, you know, what if we deviated? Yes. So that's deviation game. What if we set up our own so studio and we made the fat stacks? <laughs> on day Instead one, of we giving it to our corporate overlords. Yeah. Instead of giving it to the fucking creative freedom pricks in, in the suits, not just to make a brand new all, IP, get paid which is what we're doing, fifty million dollars for it. Groundbreaking new IP with innovation, 
at its very core. And the team at Deviation Games, the culture we have is really, really simple. It's, there's no place for ego. It's the best idea that always wins, and that's Deviation Games. All right, well, uh, big ideas from you guys as we would expect. Now, I know it's very early, and uh, there is nothing to show on the game today, but can you tell us a bit about what kind of game you're making? What can we expect? Call of Zombies. Yeah, I mean, you're very right there. Duty. Very early, but a um, lot of exciting stuff going on. So essentially, we spent the last year building the team, right? And so what we knew was we wanted to collect passionate, creative, Fishing collaborative supremacy. people and bring them together kind of under one Can't. roof. And that's what Deviation Games is. So uh, yeah, we don't have anything to show right now, but that, that collaboration, that imagination is, is going on. And we're going to have something that's going to, uh, I think, leave an indelible mark in the industry when we come out. All right. Well, uh, with you guys involved, as I said, we're excited about it. There is one more piece of the puzzle, though, that you want to reveal uh, today. And for that, let's take a look at this. Here's a bunch of people that you will probably have never heard of. <laughs> is it? Is it? Are they? Are they being bought by Sony, okay, or just that they're news, working with changed. them for the first game? Uh, <laughs> Blue of PlayStation. So you're partnering with uh, with PlayStation. What can you tell us about that partnership? Partnering. That's okay. right, Jeff. And the partnership with PlayStation. It's all about quality, from soup to nuts. This project is all about quality. What did he and just say? And our team of deviators that we have back uh, in the studio. We're doing this for you. We are so proud of you. And um, the partnership with Sony, it's, it's very, very simple. I mean, God, just look at the track record of consistency of high quality games that they do. It's hit after hit. It's award after award. And now we've been part of this process and we see how they do things. Yeah. It's really clear how they're managing to accomplish that. So we It's going to be, be really awkward if they release their game and don't have a hit and don't get awards which we're now going to do after in a very, very that. significant way. I mean, let's just face it, right? Sony rocks, and they, they get our kind of brand of crazy, so we're That's very right, happy yeah. with this partnership. All right, so Deviation Games, PlayStation, brand new IP, a mega IP, it sounds like, coming in the future, and uh, hopefully we'll cool. see Cool, can't wait to see more about that in, uh, let me check my watch here, 2025. All right, uh, Dave, Jason, thank you very much, guys. All right, well, this year is the 30th anniversary Well, it's of been an hour and a half. And later this month, we are honored to be premiering the full He Sonic said it would be an hour and a half. It's been an hour and a half. Right now, here's the Philharmonic Orchestra in Prague performing the music of Sonic Unleashed. I can I can leave this in, right? Pro probably. Yeah. It's Sonic the fucking Hedgehog, right? Surely that ain't getting DMCA. Also, I'm sorry, Sonic Unleashed, what? <laughs> does, does anyone know the music from Sonic Unleashed? It, did anyone play Sonic Unleashed? All I know about Sonic Unleashed is that he transforms into a fucking werehog. And people hated it. Sonic the Werehog. The moon comes out and he gets all beefy and aggro and starts kicking the shit out of anything that moves. And that's like half the game is a Sonic, like, brawler, almost? Which is just, you know, what everyone was asking for. Fuck speed. Mother, the, the werehog cannot fucking run. <laughs> it's a Sonic the Hedgehog game. It's about speed. And half the game, you can't run. I note that they are not showing any Werehog gameplay in these gameplay bits. They are only showing the half of the game where you can run. Curious! Let me stroke the hairs on my chinny chin chin! No, Werehog, you may not come in. Cool. 
Well, I talked over most of that, but I'm not gonna lie, I feel like that wasn't anything particularly amazing. I mean, obviously, the Philharmonic Orchestra is pretty fucking good, but... Love orchestra music. All right, Sunday, I don't think that was, like, Warner Brothers an Games track, and Turtle Rock will be giving players a new look at the We're still going. Motherfuckers, it'll be an hour and a half. We already passed right now, that. we've got a quick tease of a new boss and news on the beta coming later this summer. Oh, it's a rhyme crime. There's news on the beta coming later this summer. <laughs> Yum 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 face yum 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 Oh no that's gonna be copyright let's talk over it let's have a look at what Back for Blood is gonna be It's gonna be Left for Dead but this time they are back and they are here for blood Come slay with us I will be sure to probably not do that because multiplayer game and that is not my thing generally but sometimes but generally not Also I've never played Left for Dead That is a fucking large boy that is a that is a girthy boy. Beta August fifth. Alrighty. The PvP showcase. What? What? One of the things I'm most passionate about is getting you guys access to play more games at home. Last year, Steam and Xbox did incredible demo events around Summer Game Fest. And, and Sony year, told Steam's everyone to go Next fuck Fest off and pay Wednesday. seventy dollars for their game. Xbox <laughs> is back again to do an ID at Xbox demo event, which I'm announcing right now. It starts on Tuesday and it's completely free. No badges required. One of the games I'm most excited about oh, in the lineup is Tuning from my fellow Canadian Hour Andrew and Shoulders. Here he is to give you a little sneak preview of the brand new demo, which you can exclusively play on Xbox starting on Tuesday. Huge bog. Man, the fact Hi, that it's still going, Schuldice, it I'm means there's still a Tunic, chance for Elden Ring to show up! An adventure about a tiny fox in a big world. Oh wait, Tunic, Tunic! Yeah, 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 yeah. This game looks sick when we last saw it. It's first a million years ago. It, uh, about six years ago. And uh, it's been changing a lot over the years, but uh, I'm, I'm really excited about where we've gotten it to today. So in Tunic, you, you start the game and you are a little fox that's washed up on a beach and you don't have a whole lot of context except for, you know, uh, uh, a lust for adventure and you are gonna wander off and maybe you're gonna find a stick and maybe if you venture a little bit further, maybe you're gonna find a sword. And it's really about that sense of discovery, about wondering what's around the next corner. People have played the game at shows before, but we wanted to put together a brand new demo that was you know for the home audience and so it's full of never before seen stuff a brand new dungeon a bunch of areas people haven't seen before cool so excited about tunic and sable also uh is going to be one of the games in that along with a lot of other awesome titles so check that out next week on Xbox. Uh, next up, stave off Ragnarok in this ancient Norse-inspired co-op action survival RPG that you can also fully play solo. Cl classic hack and slash gameplay goes Viking in Norsefell's Tribes of Midgard, launching on PlayStation and PC July 27th. Here is the brand new trailer. When he said Ragnarok, I got momentarily excited the for God of War. Midgard, and then he and immediately crushed that erection. But your first task is to find some new He fucking that destroyed it. Drafty. He beat it into submission. Your tribe's journey starts in the wilderness. Hunt down pets, gather rare resources. Oh good, it's another co-op game. Untamed world. I know he said you can play it solo, but oh Once man. Give me my story focus carry. shit, Jeff. Return to your village and use or Elden Ring. <laughs> One of the two. Preferably Elden Ring. You must protect the seed of Yggdrasil at all costs. Can't wait for, for them to not show it. it and then maybe show it like at the end of the year. So take heed. And then it will be like coming 2023. <laughs> No, wait. I'm still on the copium. The They're gonna show it today! Each They're gonna show it after this trailer! For a new yes! To venture yes! Into new land. Elden Ring is happening! Yes! Believe! I believe! And with great risk comes great rewards. Yeah, but be careful. baby! You're a little used to Midgard. We just gotta get through this trailer. And then Elden Ring is coming. We're gonna see it. Defenses. It's gonna be great. The There's been two tribe. years of non-stop hype for it. There's no way it could possibly way. let anyone down. It's just not a possibility. Oh no, we're and starting to lag. Why are we doing that now? Not when Elden Ring is coming up next. Let's show them our might is greater than their height. <laughs> might is greater than height. As the saying goes. As the saying goes. Valhalla. Can't wait. 
tribes of something I won't be playing. Available next month. It's time. Here Who's we go. Who's ready for some Evil Dead? We announced Not this me. game last December Fuck. at TGA, and now it's time for an extended look at the gameplay. To tell us more, let's turn it over to my friend, Tim Willits from Sabre. Hi, Jeff. It's great to see you. Today, we have some extended footage of the Evil Dead, the game. Nice Iron Man we statue in the background. Holy shit, this. that's big. And to help me explain it is Bruce Campbell. Fucking love Thank me you. some Iron Man. I wonder how much that cost. That's huge. That must have been thousands. That must have been thousands. Oh, is this another co-op zombie thing? It totally is, isn't it? Because we don't have enough of them right now. Hola, cyber friends. I'm Bruce Campbell. You know me as Ash Williams, the dude who saved the world from evil. I'm here to bring you the lowdown on the upcoming Evil Dead, the game. You and your friends will team up as classic Evil Dead heroes to live the nightmare. You'll use savage finishing moves or tear evil a new one. Or if you're not into wow, the whole save the that's world brutal. thing, we have another option. Yo, that spade one was insane! Stamp the spade through the neck you and then fucking leave her off Kandarian the head! demon itself. But who would want to do that? He'd be a dick. <sighs> With the power of possession in your arsenal, you'll scare those goody two-shoes to death. Literally, you can do that if you're a dick. Whether you choose okay, I like the, the voice of evil or righteousness, you'll be throwing down in places you've seen before. You'll collect pages of the Necronomicon, uncover Nobi's lost tapes, and track down other legendary artifacts. When you've grabbed enough, you'll use a spell to send the Kandarian son of a bitch back to the hellhole it came from. Soon, you'll experience the horror yourself, but for now, I'll leave you with this thought. It was no accident that Ash always wore Brown pants. some good executions going on in that game I'll give them that but uh yeah it's another fucking co-op multiplayer zombie fucking fuck them up fest I just want single player I just want story focus I just want Elden Ring come on it's time the copium is running dry here okay guys now it's time is it is it happening grand finale is it happening show. Please, Jeff, this fucking do it for me. This is extremely special. Do it. Today, Jeff. I am so deeply honored to be given the opportunity oh my to share God, this it, next game. Is it happening? It comes from one of our industry's most acclaimed developers. Oh my God, is it happening? Game of the Year winner at the Game Awards. Is it happening? I want to personally thank this developer for believing Sekiro in my vision game of, the year, of right? Game Fest as is a it? new way is it to bring all of us together for a cross-industry showcase and kick off the summer in the is right it way. Is So... Without further ado, oh my fuck! I think it's happening. Sit back and enjoy this truly spectacular world premiere. Oh my fuck! I it think it's happening. Is finally time. Yes. Oh, there's nothing else they'd hype up like that. It's happening. It's happening. Holy fuck! Yes. Oh, put away the copium. Not needed. It's actually here! The tarnished will soon return. Oh Guided man, that's pretty. Once lost. Holy fuck. The golden oh. order is broken to its core. 
Oh my god. It's a magic horse! That's the best kind of horse! Oh, that is pretty! Yo! He had that bell hanging from his fucking nuts! Foul tarnished. In search of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. They will fight, and they will die in an unending curse. Imagine if it says 2021 at the end. It, I, it surely isn't. It seems like that wouldn't be possible. But imagine. Imagine if it says 2021. Brandish, I will enemy. die. I will actually die if it says 2021. For all of us. Do I get to live? Oh my god! It's, it's not 2021, but it's the fucking story! Of 2022! Holy shit, that's so much sooner than I was expecting! It happened. And I actually get to live as Elden well because Ring it wasn't 2021! Coming, as you saw, January oh, 21st, that's so soon! I mean, not really, it's still gen, over half a year away, but gen, still, it's, it's pretty so fucking incredible, soon! And I want to thank so much oh Uzaki my god. The team for sharing that. Oh my god! At Elden Ring. I hope you guys are Holy happy. Shit. Oh my god, I'm free. That looks sick. Out of prison, all right. Yes! Uh, and that's going to do it for Summer Game Fest kickoff live. Thank you so much to all the developers who took part. And for you and watching around the world, it means so much to me. Summer Game Fest continues all weekend with Netflix. Oh, week fuck. And Prime that that show just you went from forward on pretty, Saturday pretty not Xbox great. Not Bethesda a lot of things I was really Sunday, excited about. To the well. greatest to show on earth. <laughs> for the full and complete schedule. And this is really just the oh, kickoff fuck. to summer yes. and a ton of other amazing events that I'm fully supportive of, and I'm very excited to see what they have in store for us as well. Holy as for me, fuck. I'll see you again on August 25th for Gamescom Opening Night Live. And this December, I am so happy to say that the Game Awards will return as an in-person ceremony at the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. More details are coming later this summer. Cool. Look Thanks forward to that. For Always a fan a of the Game Summer Awards. Game Fest. We will see you tomorrow Jeff Keighley, I salute Stay you. Stay tuned for the You're Day of the fucking Dez force for good and double fine in the industry. Right now. We stand. Good night, everybody. Au revoir. Thank you, Based Jeff. Based Jeff got us the Elden Ring trailer. Yes! Oh, fuck yes. Oh my god, let's pause that there because that is the end. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of the other games that I was going to talk about at the end here because there were a few that I was liking. There was quite a lot that I wasn't. I wasn't really into, but there was a few. There were a few that I was like, yeah, it's look pretty good. Uh and they've all vanished from my mind. They've all gone. They've they've been released from the brainwaves because Elden Ring! And it looks amazing! And it was actually there! And it's coming in January! That's so soon! I was thinking it was gonna be like fucking two years away gonna, or something. Like, they wouldn't even put a release date. But I was like, oh, imagine a fucking world where it's like coming. November or whatever. And it wasn't November. So, you know, that's actually pretty good because there's a lot of, like, there's already a couple of huge things coming in November that... I, um, I, I, I don't have time for more things in November, so this is actually fucking perfect for me as well, that it's coming in January. January is usually slow as fucking shit, because everything always comes out in the run-up to Christmas for those big fat Christmas sales. So the fact that it's January, oh, it's perfect. This is fantastic! I'm so happy! Can you tell? 
Can you tell? I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait to get fucking salty as shit at that game, which will happen because it's me and I always get salty at FromSoft games. Very, very salty at points, but I actually am so fucking excited. I mean, you can tell. I, I, ah, 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 I can't wait. January, roll on January. Right, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get this fucking rendered and uploaded and hope you enjoyed watching it. I'm going to be here for uh, the Microsoft conference. Well, I say I'm going to be here. I'm actually not going to be here here. <laughs> not going to be recording it in the same place. I'm going to be away. But uh, I will be recording it whilst away. And hopefully the sound quality will be pretty similar. Uh, and all that jazz. But uh, can't miss the Microsoft one because Halo stuff. Can't wait. There's going to be Bethesda stuff. Starfield. Can't wait. Very, very exciting. Uh, is there any other conferences I'll do? Uh, eh, probably not. Probably not. Maybe, I think there's a Nintendo one. I'll try and cover the Nintendo one as well. Uh, Ubisoft and Square Enix, probably just going to watch those. Uh, but we'll see how things go. Uh, but yes, awesome. Oh my god. Oh my god, it happened. It happened, guys. It actually happened. Yes, enough from me. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go and scream. Enjoy. And that's the end of the video. Goodbye.